and discussions on the work of Chris Claremont. His politics, timeless narratives, and long game story structures come up quite frequently, but not so frequently as the sheer quality of his characters. A diverse group of strange beings with strange powers living in a strange and dangerous world, yet who all somehow still felt grounded, real, and even familiar. According to screenwriting guru Robert McKee, true character is revealed in the choices a human being makes under pressure. The greater the pressure, the deeper the revelation, the truer the choice to the character's essential nature. Now for his own part, and in order to emphasize that depth of revelation, Claremont keeps his characters under constant pressure on a world-altering scale. The result is constant revelation. In evidence of this, let's look at character in the Dark Phoenix Saga to see how Claremont is tracking their different pressures and subsequent revelations. Uh, if we take the lead character herself, the Phoenix, Jean Grey, we find her grappling with newfound power after years of oppression, dealing with her love for Scott, her infatuation with Weingard, and the tempting alternative lifestyle that Dark Phoenix presents her with. Over on the other side of that relationship, we find Cyclops grappling with a changing power dynamic in his relationship with Jean, the achievement of his heart's desire, and the sense of vulnerability that comes with having something worth losing all while dealing with his responsibility as leader. A responsibility that, of course, puts him at odds with the safety and security of the woman he loves. Professor X, meanwhile, finds himself caught between loyalties to his students, to the safety of the world, and to his love of Lilandra. Colossus, by no means an important character in the Dark Phoenix Saga, is seen struggling to embrace Western cultural values and preserve his integrity in the face of various temptations. Most notably, he is uncomfortable with the wealth and status that an X-Man exhibits in contrast to his humble background and his socialist philosophy. Kurt struggles to maintain his happy-go-lucky attitude in the face of completely unfunny tragedy. He is forced to confront the divide between his fantasy life that he chooses for himself and the grim realities that being an X-Man exposes him to. He has to choose to either grow up or to find some sort of value in the false smile. He's obviously putting on airs to keep from facing the real tragedy of his isolation at the hands of his grotesque appearance. Logan finds himself trying to find a balance between his violent instincts and skills and his desire to be something other than a killing machine. Constantly put in a position where the lives of others depend on him employing the skills that he'd sought to leave behind. Thus, he's having a hard time escaping his past. Simultaneously, he's forced to deal with his unresolved and unrequited love for Jean. For her part, Aurora is dealing with her own platonic love for Jean, while also trying to come to terms with the fact that Jean's story is not that different from her own extreme power, dark side of personality slash identity. At the same time, Storm struggles to maintain her closeness to nature while operating within a very unnatural world. Hank, meanwhile, is caught between loyalties, but also caught between his desire to redefine himself with the Avengers weighed against the nostalgic pull of being back with the X-Men and the familiarity and comfort that brings. Warren feels out of place with the new X-Men. He does not function well within the new team dynamic, and at the same time does not support the ideological shift the new team represents. This becomes especially evident in his distaste for Wolverine. The point here is that the pressures faced by each and every X-Man are individualized, and more complex than the pressure of just defeating the Hellfire Club and defeating Dark Phoenix. The collective pressure. We can easily jump eras and see the exact same strategy unfolding with the Outback team, where Psylocke grapples with her individual concerns about her cold-blooded warrior nature, just as Alex grapples with his mounting frustration of keeping his power in check and his concerns about his legitimacy as a superhero in the wake of his own hesitation and living in the shadow of his brother, but also finding a new mentor in Wolverine, but not sure he's comfortable becoming that, while also questioning if the solace he's experiencing with Madeline is ethical and on and on and on. In interview, Claremont doesn't use the word pressure, he uses the word torture. And in torturing his beloved characters, he brings them to life in a way that is rich and real and deeply relatable. By customizing individual tortures for individual characters, he finds their voices unique, distinctive, and dynamic. This isn't just a story about technique, though. It's also a story about love. Claremont fought for his characters constantly, never wanting to cheapen them or dilute them. He also fought to keep them, turning down opportunities to make more money elsewhere so he could stay with them, and even tolerating for a while humiliating editorial practices that were, in my humble opinion, clearly aimed at making him quit. And though he held out, he did eventually leave his characters behind. But he never forgot them. Where most authors dedicate their novels to their families, Claremont's first solo novel, First Flight, includes the dedication, quote, and to Charlie, Scott, Jean, Aurora, Logan, Peter, Kurt, Sean, Kitty, Rogue, Betsy, Alex, Allie, and all the rest, end quote. 
these characters meant the world to Claremont. And ultimately because of that, they have the depth and the capacity to mean the world to generations of X-Men fans. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the Claremont Run project, you can follow us on Twitter at Claremont Run, or you can find us on the web at www.claremontrun.com.